everybody. Today I'm in Mid Wales. It's a bit of a miserable morning, but I love coming out after it's rained. You get a nice sheen to everything and it really brings out the colors. That's the plan today and I'm hoping to get some autumn-esque photographs. Wow, every time I've come here in the past, there's been so much more water flowing down this river and it hasn't been so overgrown. Now this waterfall isn't an amazing shot, but I'm gonna get it anyway. It's nice to have all the greenery around it with a few of the leaves turning yellow and turning brown. rain keeps coming and going oh, but there are some big drips coming off the tree camera's a little bit wet but it's not too bad one thing i have noticed with these tamron lenses they're not that good when they get really wet what i've found is if you get rain in here and you pull it in that pulls moisture into the lens then when you go out if it's a little bit sunny and the sun gets on your lens especially if the temperature's a little bit cooler you get a little bit of fog in the lens I've had that happen to me on the previous shoot, and it's not great. You've got to wait around for that moisture to go from inside the lens. I think after today, my lenses are going to be in a box of rice. Now, whenever I've mentioned woodland photography in the past, I talk about the chaos. This is just so chaotic. But I'm sure we can find something here that has some kind of order or that just stands out a little bit. I found one shot. Now I've got these leaves coming off this tree. They've turned a little bit yellow and we've got the darkness of the gorge in the background. Now I'm kind of looking down at them a little bit. So this is the tight shot. And that tree, it, this is level, but that tree is a bit wonky. So I'd probably take it about here to make sure that tree is parallel with the edge of the frame. It kind of works as a wide shot as well. It's just a shame there's nothing in the bottom right hand corner. That's a bit of a dark corner with nothing in it. I do like the branch going across the top and that kind of frames it up. And I'm trying to cut out as much of that boring sky as possible. Whenever I'm on bridges like this, I always use them as a brace. So I'll always lean against them to give me that extra bit of stability. I'm a stickler for something like this. Leaf covered in water droplets. Always a winner. Just getting a good angle on it. This bright area in the sky is actually working out quite well. Because it's so bright over there, it's offering almost directional light, but directional soft light, not really hard light. So we've got this row of trees here, and some of them stand out quite nicely with this hill in the background that's giving them a dark background. So I'm going to try and pick one of these trees off. I'm going to pick out this old one here with a prominent trunk. There's actually a little bit of fog coming up the valley in the background. That's giving a bit of separation. Not sure if it's going to work though. I do have to admit, I'm not much of a tripod shooter. When the light drops and when I need it, I use it. But if I can get away with not using it, I don't get the tripod out and it stays on my bag. And you've probably noticed this in some of my videos where I'll bump the ISO up and leave this on my bag instead of getting a nice clean shot. Sometimes I think the shot just isn't worth it. But I think these branches look really nice. The ISO is up around about 1000, 1600. And I wanna drop it down to 100 just in case I can get a really good shot there. So this is the shot, I've gone super tight on this bit of branch. We've got the leaves below it and we've got the leaves above it. I like how these bits of branches just stand out. They're almost framed by the leaves. Gone f5.6, so the widest aperture for this lens. 
I'm going to drop the ISO down to 100, which is giving me 1 13th of a second. That sun is coming out a little bit, but it's not shining on this scene yet, so it's still quite a soft light. And we've got it on the timer. I'll take the shot. Tell me which way, and it's that way. bugger so my drone is in there somewhere probably see the red flashing light maybe how can that still be up there come on drop oh. seems to be all right That wasn't the best thing to do, I don't think. Mini 2s are pretty sturdy though. That took an absolute beating. Got stuck in the tree. This arm folded back. And it's still working. Yay. So my drone has lost two of its nine lives. Look at this. We have a little old rustic bridge. Now, is there a shot here? There's got to be. So we've got all these trees and rubbish down here. That makes it really messy. But it is a really nice river there, a nice framing with that bridge going across. We've also got this white little bit in the distance where the water's going underneath the road bridge. So without hunting around too much, I think this will be the first composition. I've got the polarizer on to reduce those reflections and to deepen the saturation in the colors. I'm gonna shoot a few handheld and just have a look to see how they are. Now with that shot that I've just taken, I know pretty much what the subject is. But if I'd taken a shot like this and I wasn't 100% sure, just bring the camera up to your eye and look through the viewfinder. Whatever your eye goes to first, that's the most prominent thing in your frame. With this one, it goes straight to the river, goes to the bridge, and then it kind of notices the river in the distance as well. So I know I've got a potentially good composition at this location. I was thinking I might shoot wider, but I don't want to get any of the sky in. I don't want to get any of this rubbish in the foreground. And I quite like where the bridge is in the frame. So I think I'm going to shoot from here and I'm going to shoot from a tripod. Now with this shot, I like this bit of rock and I like this branch coming down here. It kind of leads your eye from this bottom corner and into the frame. I didn't want to get the whole bridge in, just wanted to get a chunk of it. I'm also going to focus that as well because I think this is too close and that's too far away. So I'm going to focus down here. Get my focus at the bottom, take the shot. Focus on the bridge. This is kind of halfway into the shot. And then focus on the waterfall in the distance. Take that shot. Now this shot might not need to be focus stacked, but I'm just getting them just in case. The worst thing is when you get a shot home 
the foreground's a little bit blurry, or the background is a little bit blurry. There's nothing worse than having an almost perfect shot. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect, but you know what I mean. Now, that rain's starting to come back in, so I'm gonna head back up to another location. Let's see what we can find up here. Nice big leaves on the floor. Look at all those. Get this, that's better. So I'm focusing on this leaf, getting everything else in the background and keeping the aperture wide open, blurring out that background. The hardest thing is finding a leaf that stands out when you're doing these really close-up shots. We've got the reflection on these leaves. The polarizer isn't cutting all of the reflection out. It's only cutting half of it out. The one leaf that I found, the sky in the background. So I think I'm gonna keep walking until I find the leaf that I'm looking for. And I think I might have found one. Right, let's see if we can get this to work. So what I spotted was this bit here, this kind of branch that's coming down. I think it's like a half broken tree that's not dead and it's covered in these brown, yellow and green leaves. I just like how that's cutting the opposite way to all the other trees. Still is a lot of chaos in the background and if there was some fog, that would help with this shot. I don't have fog today, I don't have a fog maker, so I'm just gonna have to do with what I've got. But I do really like how it stands out. Let's go here. So this is at 28. If we go in, that's at around about 90. It's about 85, something like that. So that's what I'm thinking. This bit really stands out and you've got some of the trees in the background with the verticals. And I just like it. I like the colors and how different they are to everything else around it. I'm just thinking if I shot this with say an 85 prime, it'd be interesting to see what it looks like compared to the Tamron 28 to 200 at around about 85. Just so happens I've got the 85 in my bag, I think. One thing I find in the woods is using an 85 mil prime, a little bit tricky, but you can get some quite unique shots with it. So let's how, see how that looks. Ooh. Gonna get it right down to F1.8. Just a shame with the trees in the background, some of them have fallen over. If every other tree was straight, then this was cutting through it, that would look fantastic. But I think on the 85, between the two, the 85 blurs the foreground a bit, and it blurs the background ever so slightly, and makes that subject stand out just a little bit more. And also with the polarizer, taking a shot with no polarization, and a shot with polarization, just to show you the difference is amazing when you put them side by side, how different they really look. It's just all of that reflective light from the bright sky just bounces off the leaves. The polarizer gets rid of all of that. I just love using polarizer in woodlands like this. Now you can be looking for big things or big landscapes or trees, but you can also be looking for little details as well. Just notice this pine, it's yellow, it stood amongst this greenery around it. So I think this could make a shot. I just like how it depicts that start of autumn. You've got the greenery around it, which is still alive. And then you've got this pine, which is dying, which is showing that autumn is coming. So next time you're out and you're struggling with your composition or you're not quite sure why it's not working, get the image in the viewfinder Hold it up to your eye and see where your eye goes to first. If it's not the subject, you need to change it. 